Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Gabriella Safti. I'm one of the physicians and the only pediatrician here at Parsley Health in New York City. I joined the team a few years ago in order to launch pediatrics. Today we are going to talk about one of the most common conditions we see in children and in adults as well, um, that is eczema. It's cold out, winter is here, and with it comes the dry air and harsher winds that can really put our skin into a tizzy. Your skin is actually the largest organ in the body. If you took it off and laid it out, the total surface area of your skin is about 20 square feet. It protects us from microbes and other toxins, helps regulate body temperature, and is the principal site of interaction with the surrounding world, making it imperative to keep the skin at its optimal functioning for overall health. Eczema is a really common skin disorder that causes this protective barrier to be breached. Did you know that eczema is one of the most common skin conditions that people come into the doctor for? Eczema, also known as atopic dermatitis, is a skin condition that results in itching, swelling, dryness, and discomfort. It can interfere with everything from missed school days and work days to anxiety and social isolation. Up to 30% of people that come in to see the doctor for skin issues are suffering from eczema. And I wanna dig into the science behind it so you can understand how and why we treat in the way we do here at Parsley Health. You see, eczema is an example of an inflammatory condition. People with eczema have increased inflammation due to these little chemical messengers called cytokines. Cytokines send inflammatory messages to different areas of the body and stimulate inflammatory responses. Inflammation is one of the factors that leads to the redness and scaling that we see in eczema. There is emerging research that is showing that eczema may be considered an autoimmune condition, an inflammatory condition where our bodies form antibodies are against our own organs, specifically the skin in eczema. Autoimmune conditions are more common in regions that get less sunlight exposure, which may be a reason why some autoimmune conditions flare in the winter. Studies have shown that autoimmune conditions like multiple sclerosis have higher incidence in higher latitudes, which is potentially due to lower vitamin D levels. We will talk about what optimal vitamin D levels look like in a bit. In addition to sunlight exposure and vitamin D, Lower temperatures in the winter have been correlated to an increase in symptoms in some individuals. One study found that children who experienced flares during the winter months show a worsening of symptoms that are directly correlated to lower outdoor temperatures. This study found that in children who flare, um, mostly in the winter months, itching reduced with a 15 degrees Celsius increase in outdoor air temperatures. There are a lot of things that we can do as functional medicine doctors to help calm down the immune system and put out this fire so your body stops fighting itself. If you have eczema, you know how frustrating it can be going to the doctor. Most docs take a quick peek, send you home with a steroid cream or ointment that provides temporary relief at best. This is because it is not addressing the root cause of eczema, the dysregulated immune system. At Parsley Health, we treat inflammatory conditions from this root cause perspective. There are many supplements that help to rebalance the immune system. I am going to break down a few of my favorites for you. Let's start with the sunshine nutrient, vitamin D. I, I make sure that all of my patients with any inflammatory condition have a vitamin D level between 50 to 70. This is really important. But supplementing with vitamin D alone doesn't cut it. We know that there are other benefits to sunlight beyond that of vitamin D. So people need to get outside if they are vitamin D deficient. The sun itself helps regulate our circadian rhythm, the sleep-wake cycle. And we know that sleeping is one of the best things to regulate our immune system. Another big player in regulating the immune system is vitamin A, which is often overlooked. Vitamin A is thought to act on your T regulatory cells, which balance the immune system so it doesn't attack itself. The T regulatory cells are like police officers of the immune system. They calm down the environment so things don't go haywire. If we can support the function of our T reg cells, then we can dampen the autoimmune process. 
The other great thing about vitamin A and eczema is that it promotes healthy skin by increasing the turnover of your skin cells. This speeds up the recovery process and heals the leaky tight junctions within the skin. Two more supplements to talk about. Curcumin is an all-star at balancing the immune system. One of the precursors to those inflammatory cytokines we talked about earlier is called NF-kappa-B, nuclear factor kappa-B. NF-kappa-B is one of the big players in inflammation. It regulates which cytokines are produced, dictating how much inflammation is present. There are natural compounds that inhibit NF-kappa-B, thereby reducing inflammation. Curcumin, one of the active ingredients in turmeric, is a natural NF-kappa-B inhibitor, so it can regulate the production of inflammatory cytokines that can contribute to inflammation throughout the body. The last skin-loving supplement we are going to talk about today is omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA from fish oil. Did you know that over 98% of Americans are deficient in omega-3 fats? That's, well, pretty much everyone. Omega-3 fats help decrease inflammation in any increased state of inflammation within the body. And these fats even help keep the skin moist. One of the symptoms of omega-3 deficiency is actually scaly dry skin. You can take a fish oil supplement, but let's take this opportunity to dive into foods that can help with eczema. Foods high in omega-3s are definitely one of them, including wild-caught salmon, walnuts, flax seeds, and anchovies are some of my favorite sources of omegas and good fat. Fiber is also essential for eczema. Fiber from non-starchy vegetables like kale, broccoli, cauliflower, and celery provide a food source for our gut microbiome. Making sure that the bacteria in your microbiome and that the gut microbiome is balanced is essential in any skin and in fact in all inflammatory conditions. This makes it a double whammy for eczema. As a refresher, the gut microbiome is the collection of all the bacteria in the intestines. Our gut microbiome is more individualized than our fingerprint. Every person has different species and different strains of these species, and which bugs you have can determine your immune health. Yeah, you have heard us say it before, but this body you are living in is all connected, and the bugs that live in your gut determine the health in your skin. You see, the bacteria in our gut take the fiber from vegetables that we eat and break it down to a compound called butyrate that feeds our intestinal cells, dampens inflammation, and helps to balance our immune systems. On the flip side, there are some foods that are super important to avoid if you have eczema. Anything that is inflammatory to the body should be avoided, and this might be different for different people. In general, Dairy typically is a more inflammatory food that can cause flares of eczema. People with more severe eczema and who develop it before the age of three months old have been found to have higher levels of allergen compounds to both dairy and eggs. Sugar is another must avoid for eczema. And let's be honest, for every other condition and to just be a healthy human, sugar that is added to foods like sodas Baked goods and cereals is one of the first things you should toss off your plate if you have eczema. And I have seen in my practice, people dramatically reduce their eczema flares by getting rid of sugar. Reducing your intake of other inflammatory foods like processed foods and foods higher in omega-6 content like vegetable oils and factory farmed meat is also a good idea. The more anti-inflammatory we can make our diets, the better. The best way to do this is to focus on a whole foods diet. Eat real food. Sounds crazy, right? But this alone can make a big change. If it comes in a package or has more than five ingredients listed on the back, consider tossing it away. As I mentioned earlier, I am the only pediatrician um, within the New York City Parsley office. We see a lot of eczema and we can discuss everything I've mentioned today in obviously much more detail. Eczema comes up often in the very newborn 
period and spanned throughout childhood and into adulthood. So if you are interested in dealing with your children's eczema or your own, um, I am the only pediatrician here and would love to talk more about it.